<laughs> Hi, I'm King, and I'm a professional chef at the Institute of Culinary Education. And in this box are all my ingredients for a $135 pho. Okay, teleported. Hi, I'm Gabby, I'm a home cook, and these are my $17 pho ingredients. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, where's the beef? <laughs> Bones? 130? It's the price per pound. I guess I'm making a vegetarian pho today, and I'll make some good pho. All right, so Chef King's recipe book here. This is the spiced beef stock pho with brisket tripe wagyu ribeye and rice noodles topped with Thai basil, cilantro, and jalapeno. The longest title potentially ever in pro versus novice history. So I was planning on making a spiced beef pho with brisket, wagyu ribeye, tripe. Which, for those of you who aren't aware, is cow's stomach. So. People get freaked out, but I love tripe. You know, it's only the lining of your stomach, but it's good stuff. I had thin rice noodles and a ton of toppings. Scallions, Thai basil. It's like a bouquet. Yellow onion, cilantro, and jalapeno. And a lemon. And hoisin sauce. Some bal chili paste and some fresh bean sprouts. For my broth, I had some flavorful beef bones. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> more yellow onions, garlic, and ginger. Yay, love ginger. I also had star anise, cinnamon sticks, black peppercorn, fish sauce, and palm sugar. I love pho, I love my recipe. Why'd you take it away from me? My version of pho was a little simpler than this, just a tad. With Gabby's recipe, I have Simpler ingredients. Stuff you're more likely to find in your kitchen or your local grocery store. It's very veg forward, vegetarian forward. It's nice looking bok choy, shiitake mushrooms, rice noodles, veg stock in a box, tamari gluten-free soy sauce. Thanks for hooking me up with cinnamon sticks. Star anise, thank you. Bean sprouts, I love lime. Wish we were making margaritas, but an onion. This is definitely like naughty pho. <laughs> this is the pho that's gonna stick to your bones. We literally have bones, so it has to happen. <laughs> These ingredients might be simpler, but I think I could use my chef skills and make them much better. If I had to guess, these ingredients probably cost 21 bucks. 17, okay. I would say this cost uh, $115. 135, okay, this is some fancy pho. <laughs> okay, and just a reminder to everyone, there is only ingredients listed, no instructions. I've definitely never cooked with this whole portion of the table before. So, beef brisket, this lovely, beautiful cut of meat. Brisket comes from the front of the cow, like around the chest. It's something that has to be cooked for a long time. Some tripe. This is definitely a first for me, so. It's a muscle, it's just going back and forth. You wanna take your time cooking that? Ooh, this is that good stuff. The Wagyu ribeye. It's just all fat. It looks so good. <laughs> A5? Don't know what that means. That's the highest grade of Wagyu you could get here in the US. So Gabby, please don't mess it up. Just sear that baby on both sides really quick, couple of minutes on each side. You want it rare in the middle. And when you plate your pho, that hot broth is gonna bring it right back up to temperature. So I think for me, the biggest challenge is going to be trying to figure out how to make a proper stock. So I sent Gabby a box of beef bones. <laughs> Just roast those bones slowly, take your time. So can I call Rose now? <laughs> is it time for that? Can we do that? Hey Gabby. Hi Rose. Your hair looks great. Thank you. I like it short. A little update. So we're making pho. Ooh, yum. Your house is going to smell so fabulous. For the stock itself, we will be using beef bones. I've never uh, cooked with beef bones before, so this is new for me. <laughs> I would just roast on high heat for about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. You're gonna get really nice, rich, deep color, a fabulous, meaty, savory, 
flavor profile. And then you're going to want to add them to a stock pot with some seasonings and then cover it with cold water. So I'm adding in a Wagyu ribeye. Wow. And beef brisket and tripe. So tripe is nothing to be afraid of. And it'll add a little bit of viscosity to your broth. For the Wagyu, you don't want to add that to your stock pot. I have People a feeling. People say it's the best beef in the world. Really? Ooh. Your brisket, on the other hand, that can go in the stock pot. About how long should I be making this broth? So first you're mm. gonna have your bones and your aromatics, your brisket, and you're going to want to cook that for about two hours. Take the meat out, then you're gonna kind of concentrate your stock for another two hours or so. Ooh, okay, I have some time to kill, I guess. <laughs> the longer it cooks, the better it is. Ah, thank you, Rose. I can't wait. Perfect, good luck. You're gonna have a fabulous, fabulous experience with this. Bye. Okay, good. I feel so much better after talking to Rose. I really love having her in my life. <laughs> so without further ado, I think it's time to start cooking. Okay, so uh, yeah, the backbone of any pho is the broth. Gabby sent me some box vegetable stock. I am going to fortify this veg stock with some other real vegetables that we're gonna roast and really build up that flavor of that veg stock. First things first, I have to roast these bones. Yellow onions, this garlic, the ginger. So in addition to my onion and my shiitake mushrooms, I'm gonna use some veggies that I have in here. Got some nice carrots. Carrot tops tend to be very bitter, and that's not one of the qualities we're looking for in our stock. So, just the sweetness from these carrots. So I'm gonna use these oyster mushrooms. I'm just gonna pull them apart to build up that earthiness, that umami flavor, since we're missing the fish sauce. Ginger, so expose that inside of the ginger. I'm gonna add some garlic. You know, it adds a lot of flavor to our stock as well. Who doesn't love garlic? I mean, garlic, I have garlic, thank goodness. I'm just gonna slice my garlic right through the middle. And then my ginger. I'm not actually sure the best way to do this, but I feel like this is the right thing to do. I'm gonna be careful, I promise. Perfect. Onto the tray. You wanna expose all the surface area you can. If I throw a whole onion before I cut this, if I threw it into a pot of water, we're not really gonna draw any flavor out of this onion. Give it a nice big slice down the middle. Woo, almost lost it. Cat-like reflexes. I've never seen bigger onions, I think, in my life, so thank you, Chef King, for these giant onions. With the mushrooms, I'm gonna do the same thing. I don't wanna make it too small, because if I make it too small, they're just gonna shrivel up. So I wanna leave them a nice size. I use half of these shiitakes. I'm gonna keep these other half for another use later, which you'll see. So now I'm just gonna nestle in all of these bones. They have what in the middle I believe to be marrow. That will hopefully cook down while they're roasting in the oven and release some of that collagen. That's what we're looking for. I'm just gonna oil these a little bit. It's just canola oil. You know, you could use veg oil at home. I would refrain from using olive oil because olive oil has a strong flavor. Some canola oil, which is a neutral oil. Nice, generous drizzle. I'm gonna just kind of massage the oil in a little bit because I don't want anything burning. Couple pinches of kosher salt. Some salt, not too heavy. We're just gonna lightly season it. So we're gonna roast our veg in that oven. It's around 420 right now, it's pretty hot. All right, so my oven is preheated to 425, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in for about 45 minutes, slip them halfway through, and then they'll be ready to go for my stock. We're gonna check on it in probably in about like 20 minutes, maybe toss them around a little bit. Most of these are made up with a lot of water, so we're drawing water out of this, and we're also building a nice flavor on top of it. All right. So, my bones have been roasting now for 45 minutes. Oh my gosh, they smell incredible. Rose was right. <laughs> it has this nice browning on it and the interior has cooked down. So, I am putting every single bit into this stock pot, even the peels. They all add flavor. Look at, oh, look at this garlic, just brown and caramely and soft. Eh. So this is my roasted ginger. Has that really bright yellow color. I matched the ginger today. <laughs> and finishing up these onions and then this fatty collagen goodness. That's gonna go straight into the pot as well. That's what we want. All right, 
So that's, oop. <laughs> Now it's time to deglaze this pan. I'm gonna just put a little bit of water and start scraping all this goodness off. Mmm, what a beautiful sound. Okay, so I feel pretty good about all of that <laughs> What a symphony. Okay. My vegetables are out of the oven, beautifully roasted. Check out the nice color on our onions, our mushrooms, ginger, the carrots. I'm gonna fortify that veg stock and make it yummy yummy. Time to toast my spices. So I'm gonna add in three or four star anise, which has that really lovely kind of licorice scent and they look like a literal star and I just think that's so cute. Looks like a star, hence the name, star anise. Two or three stars are enough. We don't need any oil. When we toast it, it's gonna release that fragrance and then that's gonna add more flavor to our stock. Um, and then three or four cinnamon sticks, which smell amazing. I love cinnamon. Cinnamon sticks, big guy, small guy. And then black peppercorns. I'm thinking like a quarter cup. I will let these toast for maybe five minutes until they're a little bit fragrant. Oh yeah, I wish you could smell this. And these are subtle flavors you're gonna taste in that broth. I'm gonna go right into my stock pot with this, along with our veg that we roasted earlier. Remember these guys? And don't forget the little tidbits that we roasted in there. That's also flavor. We don't wanna lose that. So we're gonna deglaze this pan right now. Almost looks like tea, right? It's like a color like that. These are literally popping. I'm gonna go ahead and just put these right into my stock pot. And then palm sugar. I've never used palm sugar. Yeah, we have a theme going today. <laughs> Toss these right in. We're gonna go on high on here. I'm gonna use the veg stock. One other thing I'm gonna add in, this is kombu. It's basically seaweed. It is seaweed, not basically, it is seaweed. Packs a lot of salt, a lot of nutrients in here. I think of umami, I think of a lot of flavor. And you know what I'm missing here is fish sauce. This is a great substitute, straight out the ocean, going straight into our stock pot. And I'm gonna add some water in there. Just needs time now. We're gonna bring it up to a boil, then lower it down to a nice gentle simmer. Go about 45 minutes to an hour. We're gonna be set. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to add in my brisket and my tripe. This beautiful piece of brisket, cut of brisket, cut of meat, I'm not sure. It's gonna go on in. I'm gonna take this honeycomb tripe it's so wiggly. It's all flaky, but it doesn't really smell like much. I think we'll be friends. I can see this happening. Now it's time to add in my cold water. If I could fit it in my sink. Actually, you know what I can do? You ever just water your tripe? This water is nice and cold though. So a couple inches above everything. I think we're good then. Time to fire it up. Bring this up to a boil and then reduce it down to a simmer and wait for two to three hours. <laughs> we have our stock simmering in the background. Over here in front of me is a pot of hot water and here are my noodles. Standard for pho, you know, you want rice noodles. They give a, it says spaghetti there. Don't let that fool you. It's not spaghetti, <laughs> it's rice noodles. Okay, so it's time to do my noodles and you want to rehydrate them, boil water first, and then pour it on top. You don't want to keep a rolling boil while you have your rice noodles in water because it'll, they'll get a little bit gummy and sticky and you don't want that. I can do that. Just like Rose mentioned, all I'm gonna do is put these in this bowl. <laughs> the water is like aggressively boiling, so I'm gonna just shut it off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these into the bowl. They're not gonna get too soft. They're still gonna be chewy. If it needs to be cooked anymore, our hot broth in the final plating stage will definitely cook it and bring it to the point where we want it. You ever play pickup sticks when you were a kid? We're just soaking the noodles in very hot water and we're gonna let our noodles sit there until we're ready to use them. I'm gonna go ahead and set them to the side. I have a lot of other things I need to do while this is still simmering. So this has been in for over an hour now and the smell is incredible. All of these onions are starting to just fall apart. All the fat and collagen is rising to the top. You can kind of see this like oil slick happening on the top. With this cute little star anise bobbing around like a little octopus. Oh, our brisket's here. We have our tripe here floating, getting some nice color. It's just a nice party going on right now. 
Without further ado, the king of the castle, we have our Wagyu ribeye right here. Perfectly, beautifully marbled meat. Give me one second, sorry, I blood on my hand. So Gabby gave me some beautiful bok choy and beautiful shiitake mushrooms I saved earlier from before. And these will take the place of my sliced beef. So I'm gonna get my pan really hot and I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil, put in my ribeye for a few minutes on each side and call it a day. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna salt it on both sides, I would assume. This meat, it just feels so light because of all the fat. Here we go. I just see, I can feel myself beaming. We're gonna take off the stems and just sear these caps. I'll probably quarter the biggest one we have. We have oyster mushrooms as well. I'm just gonna take the mushrooms off that stem. We're gonna sear these up in a nice hot pan as well. Let's season it, some salt. Mushrooms are almost like a sponge as well, so they're gonna soak up a lot of this fat. Oil's already gone, so I'm gonna a little more. Nice caramelization. See, we have that beautiful color already on our mushrooms. The moisture is coming out of them. Now they're getting a little bit more chewy. They're jumping in the pan. They're building up. Look at that color in there. Looks like a piece of meat. Well, I think it's a piece of meat, but it looks great. And that's a mushroom. I think it's pretty good. Time to flip it. Bok choy, you know, it's similar to beef. Uh, they both begin with B. B for bok choy, B for beef. I don't think it's gonna taste like beef, but we're gonna have really flavorful bok choy. I'm gonna sear it. So I'm gonna put it cut side down in the pan, just like how we would sear a nice steak on a really hot pan. And that'll go on top of our bowl of pho. This is good to go. I think it's done, for sure. Oh, we're gonna do this side up. Yeah, I'm spitzing, it's hot, it's really hot. And here is my Wagyu ribeye. I think it's gonna be perfect on top of the pho. So I have my broth simmering here for about 45 minutes. A lot less time than what Gabby's cooking. She has those beef bones going. You're gonna need those to be on for about three hours, maybe four hours. It's been about two hours of simmering. It's time now to take out my tripe. Boop. And then let me find my brisket. Here we go. This brisket is definitely transformed. It's browned up nicely. You see some of the red. I'm not done with these yet. This still has another two hours to go. And these will be sliced up and put on top at the end. So right now I'm gonna take my stock and strain it out through this sieve and this cheesecloth. And we're just gonna be left with a nice broth. Looks amazing. I'm psyched. I can smell all those aromatics. I smell those vegetables. So next I'm going to put it in the pot, bring it back up to a boil, down to a simmer. All right. Okay, so my stock has now been simmering for four hours. I'm going to go ahead and strain it. One big old saucepan full going in. This is really fun too, to be honest. Thank you, Chef King, for such a fun recipe. I've never seen such a very clear line of collagen that's resting on the rest of the stock. It's pretty awesome. We're gonna taste right now before we season. Wow, there's a beautiful sweetness in there and it's from the carrots, from those onions. I get hints of ginger in there, the cinnamon, all those things we added in there. There is some salt from the kombu and also those mushrooms add that nice umami punch to the broth. But right now to get everything well balanced is salt. Salt brings everything together. As if this isn't already flavorful enough, we are going to season it just a tad bit more. So we have our fish sauce and some kosher salt. And I know Rose said to not go crazy with the fish sauce. It's really pungent, so a little bit goes a long way. So you don't want to overdo that either. Otherwise, you'll really mute some of the other fabulous flavors that you mm. have. I am going to add just a little bit in. Oh yeah, that is fish sauce, that's for sure. I'm gonna start with about a half a teaspoon. Let's just eyeball it. Ideally, uh, I'd have my bottle of fish sauce right here and go boom, boom, boom. I don't have fish sauce here. Gabby was nice enough to give me some tamari. It's soy sauce, not a typical seasoning for pho. One more for good luck. We're good. It was so hot. I didn't think it would be that hot. <laughs> yep, it's amazing. Definitely does need some salt, a really nice fat pinch of salt. I can feel 
it just coating my lips. It's really awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this on low while I go and prep my garnishes so that it's nice and hot until it's ready to assemble. Great, I have all my ingredients in front of me to make a beautiful pho. We are going to prep the toppings, which are truly the icing on the cake of pho. I couldn't help myself, but fresh herbs and pho, I mean, they're like peanut butter and jelly, you know? And these herbs, basil and cilantro, weren't given to me by Gabby, but first, I'm gonna slice these onions. We're gonna have some sliced onions to garnish our pho. They're pretty thin. That broth hitting this will just, again, bring out more aroma. I'm still not the greatest at peeling onions. I'm gonna go ahead and just start slicing this as thinly as possible. I'm gonna add that over here onto the plate. Mmm, onion hands, nothing like it. Nice uh, wedge of lime. It's gonna add that acidity to our pho. Remember, it's, it's a really rich broth. It's sweet, it's salty, and now it's gonna be a little sour as well. Our lemon! I'm gonna just go ahead and quarter this lemon and put a couple wedges. Okay, jalapeno. I'm gonna make some really, really thin slices as well. I think that's enough. Mmm. All right, green onion. Really thinly slice these. I'm just gonna throw a handful of the bean sprouts on. Make it look fancy. Okay, so here are my garnishes, and then I will just very casually pluck a few leaves of my cilantro, and none other than our Thai basil, and I found a friend. Look who's joining us. It's our basil gnome. And I will add in my hoisin and sambal. I think we're ready to plate. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this brisket and see where the grain's going and then try and slice against that. It's like falling apart, which is exactly what I want. It's amazing to think that this has been marinating in all of that. <laughs> then I have my tripe. Just some really nice thin slices. They're kind of like noodles. They're like little thin noodles. And then the bell of the ball, we have our Wagyu. We're gonna go this. Ooh, oh my gosh. I can't wait. So fatty and delicious looking. I cannot wait. My meats are prepped. These are our beautiful noodles that have been soaking. Our bok choy. Oops. Our very meaty mushrooms. Our sliced onions. Get a nice, generous pile of the nudes, brisket, tripe, the wagyu. Let's just say this is definitely not anything like what my pho looked like. <laughs> I'm gonna just start ladling this magic, delicious, fatty, collagen-filled bone broth. Oh, look at that. <sighs> Now for finishing touches, some beautiful basil, bean sprouts, some cilantro, a little hit of lime. That's our pho. Thinly sliced onions, bean sprouts, jalapenos in this little area. I almost said corner. Green onion I'm gonna sprinkle all over. One of my lemon wedges over here next to that. Sprigs of cilantro. And then my Thai basil. Last but not least, my sambal and hoisin. We won't go too crazy, but I'm feeling kind of crazy. The hoisin, which I'm just gonna kind of do a little drizzle. That seems good. Okay. The pho looks amazing. The nice char on the mushrooms and the bok choy, beautiful bed of noodles. Gotta take a shot of this. And this is my take on Chef King's pho. I hope Chef King thinks I did a good job. I, th I think he'll think so, but I really hope so. I can't wait to check in with Gabby and see what she did to my recipe. I love it, I'm ready to dig in. I cannot wait to try this. <laughs> Ooh. This is a vegetarian pho. It's actually, I think it's a, it's a vegan pho, actually, right? I mean, I always take the, the broth first, you know, it's the, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mmm, it's so good. <laughs> I'm gonna try these mushrooms too. Good job. I didn't get a bite of tripe. Let me try that. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's really good. The broth is 
I would say the richest broth I've ever, ever eaten in my entire life. You just feel it. That broth is on the spot, you know, the hit of lime at the end, the earthiness from those mushrooms, the sweetness from the carrots, the sweetness from those charred onions. The noodles are nice and chewy, just how I wanted them. The bean sprouts give it that beautiful crunch. I didn't get a piece of the bok choy. I'm gonna take some of that bok choy. I'm gonna try a bite of the Wagyu. Okay, I understand now why it's $130 a pound. <laughs> it's so tender, it's like butter. It's like butter if butter were meat. Oops, perfect. Hi, Chef King, how are you? Good, how are you doing? The day was long, but I think super well worth it. What do you think? I love it, it looks great. I wish I could try it, it looks very good. I wish you could too. I'm not in my kitchen anymore, but uh, I had to run back to the school and teach class, but I took a picture of uh, the veg version. Oh. oh my gosh, it looks great. It looks like those mushrooms almost could be me. Yeah, what'd you think about the, the, uh, the Wagyu, the A5, was it like butter? Oh, I literally said it, it was just like, if meat could be butter or if butter turned into meat, it was that. <laughs> Honestly, when you put it in this broth, I mean, how can you go wrong? <laughs> you know, the beautiful thing about pho is it has a lot of elements going on in terms of flavor, taste, and textures. It's not like it's a crazy, challenging culinary feat. It's just time and effort and patience. So I think that I learned a valuable lesson today in that. <laughs> okay. What do you think? That's right, you're a vegetarian, I forgot. What a cat.